So I think the impact of this super long DNA we've like this for the last 25 years, when we're looking at the short snippets of DNA, it's like I'm texting you. I can text you 20, 30 words. But now with the long, super long cell-free DNA for the first time, I send you a whole word document for you to study. And then also during pandemic, we received a grant from the NIHR to investigate the regulation and use of confidential patient information for genomic me and medicine, medical research during and post COVID-19. And even more recently, just hot off the press, we've been working with, well, we've been commissioned by the MHRA to undertake a regulatory review of synthetic health data. So some important work there to maximise the utility of the data. Now let's shift the focus to pharmacogenomics. I don't think anyone in this room, at least I hope, will need convincing that we need to do more to unlock the genetic basis of adverse drug reactions. That estimate that around a third... Guys, we've been around a bit younger than PhD, a couple of years younger, I think 23 years old now. Um, and we are very much looking at how the pressures on the NHS, everyone's very aware of that. How can we produce guidance quicker? How can we um, make sure we're focusing on what really matters most to the NHS and people as well? Um, this is kind of a reinvigoration, I would say, of nice... But and it new. is really how one puts it across. And I think this is the issue of the tension that all policymakers have between taking an entrepreneurial approach, which is wanting it to go, let a hundred flowers bloom, and if a few of them don't work, doesn't matter, we'll just try the next one, to the very cautious scientific approach, which requires all the evidence lined up like ducks in the row, and then also what values we have as individuals.